Hi, in this session you will learn about which drivers may cause building vacancy and the reasons for adaptive reuse. First, a short introduction to why this week we're focusing on the topic of adaptive reuse. Worldwide, new buildings are constructed while existing buildings are left vacant. There are several reasons why this is happening. One, overproduction due to speculation. Two, urban development and changing land use. Three, spatial use decrease. Four, changing real estate cycles. Five, increasing quality demand. And six, because the quality of existing buildings lag behind. Then why do we continue building new instead of using the buildings that we already have? Well, building owners and investors, developers, builders, governments and end users choose for new build instead of adaptation and adaptive reuse because new build is seen as easier than adaptive reuse and the initial investment costs are assumed to be lower and the income higher. Also, the parties involved in designing, developing and investing in new real estate are normally not the same parties as those who own existing vacant real estate and so they do not have a drive to adapt and reuse existing buildings. In a free market, and as long as land is available on attractive locations, new build will be interesting. So, when it comes to the question who is to blame for the overproduction of real estate, the different actors blame each other, and this is what is called the circle of blame. You might also ask yourselves why should we adapt and reuse existing buildings? From an environmental sustainability point of view, adaptation for the same function and adaptive reuse are normally more sustainable than demolish and new build. When looking at the aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions according to recent international agreements, they would be hard to achieve through demolish and new build only. In the whole developed world, only 1% is added to real estate stock yearly. 80% of the buildings we need before 2050 are already built. So surely, if we want to achieve the climate goals that we have set ourselves, adaptation and renovation of the existing stock is a necessity. However, when considering sustainability measures, the focus is often on energy saving, whereas the threatening scarcity of raw materials use and waste of materials is often forgotten. The focus on direct energy saving in some cases could even lead to less sustainable development. This includes material use and construction waste in the sustainability assessment makes adaptive reuse far more interesting. Social cohesion and societal development is another reason to adaptively reuse buildings. Vacant buildings have a negative influence on the value of buildings in the surroundings and vacant buildings are typically less well maintained and safeguarded with graffiti and vandalism as steady companions. Neighbors of vacant buildings are normally very positive to vacant buildings being adaptively reused as it improves safety and value of the surroundings. Demolition and new build, on the other hand, leads to disruption, uncertainty and social unrest. Adaptive reuse is often perceived as not financially feasible and the lack of financial feasibility is often referred to as the reason for new build. However, adaptive reuse should be compared to demolition and new build, not only to new build. In some cases, Lack of financial feasibility is a result of not calculating well or not doing the necessary analysis before starting the project. So, with this session, you have now learned which drivers may cause building vacancy and the reasons for adaptive reuse. Thank you for watching.